Content or buy everything. Western's legal systems, it is because they are superior to Sharia law. It doesn't mean that I agree with the basis of Western Enlightenment civilization. We're going to the camera room. <laughs> He went to the media Algenet production company and he said, I'm a sound engineer, which prompted me to come out and say, I'm a rapper producer. Now, you see now that I've said that, I can see a lot of rappers and producers and other engineers coming to find us. Now, this is how it starts. Yeah? Now, don't think because you see all black faces that it's about black, innit? Because even David Icke, has put down the research and the statistics to show that blood samples were taken from different women all over the country and all of their DNA corresponds Get back in, so then I'm you make it a few assumptions there, like uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't like disassociate myself from kind of my history as an English person. Um, so tell me, if you, if you're if identifying as a cultural Christian and you're saying that, you well, know, I mean, yeah, I, I, I what does it mean that. to be a Christian? I, I identify as being a follower of Christ. Identify as being a follower? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what it means to me. If someone says I'm Christian, that means to me that they're a follower of Christ. Yeah, it means to be a disciple of Christ. And what was Christ's teaching? The gospel. Which is? Uh, you know, what, what he's been, what's been recorded as his teachings by the disciples. Now that's and, a very, uh, that's a very general way of saying you don't actually know what the gospel is. What is but, the gospel? I mean, if you wanted me to say exactly every single one of Christ's teachings, wouldn't that no, no, take no, no. a long time? The gospel can be summarized. Every Christian can summarize it very quickly. What's the gospel? Right. Well, what's what's the summary of no, my teachings? point? My point is, my point is, my point is, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to point something out. To you. The gospel has been the most influential narrative of European civilization. Yeah, come on, man. It has no molded everything around us. It is our heritage, <laughs> if we're identifying purely at a cultural level. It is who we are if we are Christian. So when someone says to me, I am a cultural Christian, my first thought is, how much do they actually know about their own heritage? If they're claiming my faith as their heritage, how much do they actually know? Yeah, yeah, I've never, never claimed to be an expert. It's the summertime. Right, no, 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 I'm not saying that, but this is my point. <laughs> it's for people that are claiming to defend the heritage of this land, but yet don't know what the gospel is means that they don't know what their own heritage is. Well, well, what's the one-line summary of the Gospel then? What's the one-line the, summary well, yeah, of the Gospel the is that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that those that believe on Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay. Every Christian can summarize the Gospel. And every cultural Christian, like yourself, should be able to. And you should understand why these words have influenced your language, your cultural yeah. norms, your legal system. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that yeah, Christianity has influenced all those things. But why has that gospel influenced those things? Because if you can't answer that question, you can't defend anything. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that would kind of provide the, the, this idea that, um, you know, if, if, if some crime has been committed, then, like, somebody has to pay, basically. Like, if, if you're saying that, kind of, because, because mankind has sinned and, ang and God is angry with them, you know, someone has to pay for that in order for God not to be angry anymore. And so Jesus decided to do that or something like that. I mean, that, that's the, that seems to me to be, and that message has, like, kind of, you know, affected our culture. It has. Yeah. And, and, and the, it, it is in, 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 infused itself into our culture profoundly. 
But every step away from that belief is a step away from that heritage and that understanding. And, and Western I, liberal society is walking itself off a cliff. I, I don't think that, I mean, yeah, I, I don't see, I mean, what, what, what period in time do you think had the best version of Christianity? Um, it, it isn't about best or worst. It is about, I would say, I would say I disagree with the, the idea of the question, this idea that we can point to some time in history and say that some point in history was better. What I would say is that the Christian faith teaches fundamentally that human beings are sinful and broken and that human beings have always been sinful and broken and will break everything that they touch in terms of social construct. That includes Christendom, includes the church, and that, and that man has no answer to this. He has no answer to that brokenness in his human heart that speaks vile and, and vindictive towards his fellow man, that seeks only after his own good, that is self-interested, self-ego-bloating, self-serving. I, I don't think it's that detail, though. I disagree with that. What? What is that? I, I don't like. It seems so kind of. That's you see. It seems though you're saying like that, that, that's an immutable fact of uh, human nature. It is. Well, I, I say it like you know, you know humans have a bunch of uh, incentives that they're trying to maximise, and you can kind of cr you can try and uh, affect the environment such that they won't indulge in a uh, kind of. Um, behaviours that are kind of seen as destructive and you can try and uh, mould their culture so that they have like a norms of behaviour that are uh, less destructive or violent and so that you can accomplish good work doing that. You, you, be seem, quite to successful. Me, you, you seem to me to be self-aware enough to acknowledge, which I, uh, which I believe to be true, that inside your own heart there are times when hate fills you. Yeah. There are times in your own heart when you lie. Yeah. There are times in your own heart when you steal. But that, that doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it, though. So my point to you is, you, 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 but you can't do anything about that. No, but we can, we can minimize its effects, though. And that is a Christian political narrative, for sure. We do. Uh, Human beings oh, are fundamental. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm live streaming right now. See that? I see you in the building. <laughs> my life, C-O-E. Yeah, you come, man. Right? I come <laughs> right, and see that right, building. Right, Look at Sarah. God damn. Listen, enjoy your Sunday. Peace, family. Peace. Like certain kind of is envy in your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah is wrath in your heart? Yes. Is yeah. lust in your heart? Yes. Is greed yeah, yeah. in your heart? Yeah, yeah, sure. But you can, you can, you can definitely like kind of, if you have a population and you want them <laughs> to uh, yeah, uh, commit uh, less wrath, wrath, <laughs> lust, less wrath, 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 then you can, then you can kind of uh, you know, create institutions and norms of behaviour which will achieve so, that. So my point to you, brother, is that when we're debating against things like Salafists, is what we're saying as Christians is that. The human condition is so broken, the point of government is not to create a perfect society. The, the point of the political narrative is never to create utopia. It is only to put off the descent of man into dystopia. Okay. Um, now, the, the, the point that I'm making is that when we look at political ideologies that deny this fact of reality that the Christian narrative speaks about as the sin of the human heart, like Islam, that says that if only we had a caliphate, all our problems would be fixed. If we could only follow Sharia, everything would be better. That kind of logic makes no sense because it doesn't deal with reality. So if you want to give a defense of the Western political enterprise, which is rooted in the Christian faith, you can do it better if you understand why the Christian political narrative of the West is based upon this idea of not striving to make utopia, but rather trying to prevent dystopia. Whereas communism, which was based upon the rejection of our Christian heritage, strives to utopia, kills millions of people in the process. But, but communism is the same. That's the beginning of this uh, conversation, though. You said that you fundamentally disagreed with this individualist. Yes. Western individualism. Yeah, yes. Well, a communist also shared that disagreement. So, towards individualist communism. Uh, yes. <laughs> held that collectivist idea. Yes. So, so, you, you know, but what do I root the collectivism in? Yeah, you, you root it in your religion. No. Well, yes, uh, but also in the family. 
communists rooted collectivism in the state. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the institution of the family is separate from the institution of the state and has certain inalienable rights that the state cannot compromise. Western liberal society, because it is abandoning its Christian heritage, is increasingly believing that the state can dictate what the family is, how the family is structured, and what the family can do. That, that's happening in some Western countries. It's happening in others. this country. Well, Scotland wanted to pass a law where every single child had an appointed person. Yeah. To essentially be there to spy on every family. That's not a that's not a necessary outcome of uh, not being religious, though. The British state stated that you cannot uh, give up children. Agencies can't give up children for adoption if they will not give up those children to adoption of homosexual families. The state has said, or representatives of the state have said, Christians cannot adopt children because they will not teach them that homosexuality is okay with God. So the state is trying to dictate to us what we believe and what we think about the family. This goes against the Christian narrative. And the reason why the state justifies this is because of the philosophical assumption that every person is an individual and must discover themselves and make themselves into whatever image they want to be. With the proviso, it doesn't hurt anyone else. Well, like, uh, hold on, like, individualism doesn't necessarily entail that last bit, that anyone can become whatever they kind of imagine themselves to be. That's quite a kind of With new the proviso that it doesn't, I agree it is a new development. And it's not really, it's not taken hold as much in America, for example. And America isn't becoming a, a more Christian country over time. It's been, like, becoming less and less of a Christian country over time. So, like, it, it, I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to kind of, uh, uh, sort of become you, more Christian in order agree, to oppose these Do negative you agree with the liberal effects. progressive agenda that we're seeing becoming state-sanctioned doctrine dogma? No. In, no, our in, in, in general, no. I disagree with lots of that. Right. If you do not believe that there is a higher authority than the Parliament, then how do you intend to refuse the way that the Parliament wishes to take the nation? Um, you know, I, 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 try and, I try and use kind of logic and um, you know, scientific studies that show that kind of, uh, um, and, and ideology from philosophers that I do agree with and political theorists that I do agree with. Here, here, is, here is the Christian answer. The Christian answer is that there is an authority higher than Parliament. The Parliament can make whatever laws it likes, but if those laws contradict the laws of God, the Christian must disobey them. That if the Parliament passes a law that goes against the narrative of God, the Christian must ignore them. Yeah. The Christian must become a usurper of the state if the state seeks to suppress the church. Yeah. So we, we usurp the communist state, we usurp the fascist state, we usurp the Islamic caliphate, we usurp the, the Nazi state. If as an agnostic you cannot point to any authority higher than the parliament, then you have no basis upon which to pin morality apart from law. But it, it depends what you mean by authority. Like, in, like, what? The authority to make laws. Like in a, in a, in a legal defi definitive sense, like it's definitely true that in the UK, kind of uh, they have the or Parliament has the highest authority. No, to make they laws, don't. Or I know uh, the Queen does. Constitutionally, or they do. I, 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 yeah, yeah, but like it depends. Then it depends what you mean by, you would, well, what you mean by law. If you mean like there's some sort of so what would other you law. what would you appeal to? If say, let's imagine, do a thought experiment. With me. The Parliament it elects a whole bunch of liberal progressives who start churning out policy after policy after policy, pushing the liberal progressive agenda. Yeah. On what basis would you resist the law? I, I, uh, so I, I try and appeal, try and get people to vote against that next election. But in this thought experiment, you've already lost the argument. The country has adopted a liberal progressive parties. They fill, in this thought experiment, the parliament has been filled with liberal progressives. The conservatives have been wiped out. It's a totally liberal progressive parliament and they're pushing liberal progressive laws onto society. What do you appeal to to resist? 
you just have to appeal to like principles. I mean, principles. Well, well, yeah, yeah. What yeah. principles? Like, I know, for example, fairness. But the parliament has the, the fair election has elected the liberal progressives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, but like, what I, what I mean is like, if uh, if these liberal progressives have uh, instituted a law which is very progressive, but it's like unfair, then you just try and convince people like, look, this this law is nonsense. It's, look, look, look how unfair it's treating people. But what are you appealing that's... to to make that argument? The, the the concept of fairness, based upon what value system? Based upon a classic. Value system, I guess. A classically liberal value system. I mean, it depends on the example. Like, I'm not a hundred percent. Let's use, let's use abortion. Okay. Because our liberal progressive society has legalized the murder of children by the million yeah. in this country. Okay. I oppose it because the faith teaches me murdering children is wrong. Why do you oppose it? I, I oppose abortion because they're living humans, and you know. We, we should consistently apply the kind of principle that, you know, murder, uh, killing uh, living humans intentionally for, without good reason is bad. And I think so we should be consistent about What these are you principles. appealing to to justify that they are living humans? The, the fact that they have different DNA from the mother, like totally different DNA. Yes. The fact that they uh, um, kind of, uh, you know, um, do the kind of. Uh, they grow, Char characteristics they of grow, life, they respond to stimuli, they, they yep. do homeostasis, yep. Yep. they respire, yep. all the things you learn about at GCSE. So if they're, if they, and the fact that like, it's according to their DNA, like they're definitely human. So they're definitely a human, they're definitely a different organism from the, from the mother, and they're definitely living. So they're like the, your and I, embryo. I, everything you've just said, I totally agree with. Yeah. Everything I just said, I totally agree with. Which just goes to show that there is such a thing as men of goodwill still in the world. And I would describe you as a man of goodwill. Will. You're clearly someone whose whose conscience has not been knocked off course completely. And I actually have a lot of common ground with classical liberals. A lot of common ground. Because obviously classical liberals are much closer to the Christian heritage yeah. than progressive yeah. liberals. Yeah, yeah, you know? But what I'm saying to you and what I would encourage you to do is as I've tried to demonstrate, particularly about the issue of the, 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 the political project, what's the purpose of politics? You would make a better defense of Western civilization if you root your defense thoroughly in its Christian heritage. I, I don't think so because I don't see kind of uh, a Christendom or a Christian state as being the end product or the, the most desirable goal. Like I think if we could have stable application of, uh, of uh, sort of certain liberal values that weren't that wasn't vulnerable to being subverted by uh, you know uh, uh, cultural Marxism and, and other sort of ideological threats, then I'd consider that preferable. Like if I. It's only because of these other threats that like things have been made worse. I think so. If 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 I, if I could kind of uh, uh, you know just defend liberalism with with classical liberalism with classical liberalism, then I consider that kind of uh, more ideal than kind of uh, sort of you know uh, adopt asking people to adopt Christianity more and uh, become more Christian. Well, than classical, liberalism, classical liberalism. Classical liberalism will be a footnote in history soon because liberalism. Liberalism on its own, with no connection to a Christian context, dies. And we see that. We see that in liberal progressive well, that, thought. That, that's what's happening now, but like the, the pendulum you, swings though. Like communism used to be so trendy with you know uh, intellectuals and people in universities, then it kind of collapsed under itself. I think some of the same thing will it happen did. with postmodernists. I, I, I do agree that, that, that they are walking off a cliff, but classical liberalism must also and will also collapse. And the reason why it will do so is every man made philosophy does. Every man made philosophy collapses. And what you're arguing for is just another man made philosophy. The church was here before classical liberalism, and the church will be here after classical liberalism. We will outlive you. Our faith. That's that every time. That's all you'll be. Oh, every time we. Christianity to work as a global against civilization. But you don't want real Christianity. Um, that, 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 that captures some of it, definitely. Wow. I, mean, I, def I definitely real don't want. I definitely don't want, um, for What's example, 
I definitely don't want to kind of call myself a cultural Christian. That's not, that's not a label that I kind of consider close to my heart, and I really want to possess okay. that label. So if you don't, and, right, and, the so, other, and the other thing is that, like, yeah. not more, more, so, than, more so than just being me, worried about just uh, more, than, more than just being worried about Islamization, I do have some appreciations for the aesthetic uh, parts let, of let, the let, Christian let, church, let me just address this which I consider, which I, I consider like desirable. And, and, and this is important: is that what we see amongst in, among certain liberals <laughs> is that they want to use the church and the Christian faith for their own political agenda. We as Christians must oppose that. We must not allow our faith to be prostituted by liberals in their fight against Islamists. But, but when you say prostituted, no, that would imply finish. that I'm debasing let, you in let, some let, way. Wrong word. Let I'm, not, it's not saying that I'm not asking you finish. to debase yourself let in any way. As Christians, as Christians, those, those who want to use our faith for their own ends, forget that we as Christians are a community. The church is a community that has its own agenda. And it's own politics and that means that we must oppose those people who only want to use our faith as a shield when it suits them and then want to say but we don't want the good stuff that Christianity has to offer when it doesn't suit them because the reality is that Christianity makes claims about the nature of existence it makes claims about the nature of reality and it makes claims about the way it is best to be human and those claims are not compatible with an agnostic liberalism. Yeah. They make competing claims. That, that, that doesn't mean we, can, we can't coexist in some way. I'm not, I'm not asking you to debase yourself or uh, you know, um, sell your body, so I'm not sure how far that uh, kind of piece of language actually reflects what, what, what has just happened here. Yeah, so, so the, the point that I'm making to you is that I would resist any attempt by any organized liberal, classical, classical liberal movement to manipulate the church to serve its own political agenda. I would resist that. Okay. Same as I would but, resist the Salafists and the yeah. Islamists. But what if someone says that, like, you know, uh, our interests overlap in this area, kind of, um, you know, uh, let's, let's not um, kind of uh, get in each other's way, like, let, let's just maintain the status quo that, that we currently have and, um, you know, uh, cooperate where it makes sense for both of us to cooperate. So where is, that, it, is that prostituting? So, so where, 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 because I described you as a man of goodwill based upon your stance on abortion. And I stand by that. Okay. That means you are a man of goodwill because your will is to the good okay. on that question. But the Christian faith leaves no space for other ontologies. It leaves no space for competing ideas. The Christian faith says that there's one Lord and that we should give ourselves wholly to him. Which means that when someone comes with a competing narrative about how the world is or how best to be human, we have to challenge them if they disagree with our faith. Okay, but so like, you not might not say, though, necessarily, right? So it, would, that, it would depend on the circumstances, but uh, it, it would it depend. <laughs> that makes it harder for me, man. If you so, say, if you so say let, well, let maybe me, we let, could let me you. let me give you an example. Let me. I do not believe we should have any tolerance at all for ISIS or ISIS supporters. Zero tolerance for ISIS or ISIS supporters. Zero. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying the state should hound them into the sewers and then hound them into the sea. However, you're not an ISIS supporter. So different people have to be treated differently. I, I would actually disagree with that on ISIS supporters though. Right, well. I, I prefer like America's freedom of speech where, you know, someone could like hold a, you know, KKK kind of speech, someone could hold an ISIS speech, someone could hold a Black Panther speech. But let's face it, ISIS hold. supporters are not just going to give speeches, are they? <laughs> no, they won't. But, but then, let's but be honest, no, no, ISIS but, supporters are no, not just going to give no, speeches. No, no, but the, then the FBI steps in once they start kind of getting ready to do a, a terrorist attack. You know, they see, have you actually started planning for this terrorist attack? Okay, you're going to jail. And this is the political narrative of the West based upon the idea of the individual. And it is exactly why they do not have a solution to radicalization that is happening within the Islamic community. Because... I think America has a solution. 
think America is doing well. What is, what is America's solution? Well, like, if you look at the state of uh, Salafism and uh, uh, Wahhabism in America, it's much less of a problem in America it's than a in the UK. Um, and I, I think if you look, no, like, oh, the, 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 the general, front, the, the trends of, like, the Muslim population in America is that they're becoming kind of more and more homogenized and liberal, and like the, the, uh, the acceptance of homosexuality amongst uh, Muslims in America is uh, higher than kind of uh, Christians in America, so they're, they're, they're being, you know, they're, 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 they're being... Would you say that there is an, uh, there, oh, over, uh, if we trace it back 10, 20 years, would you say there has been a growing or a decreasing threat by ISIS there's, to American I, soil? I, I think there's been a growing, I think there's been a growing threat by ISIS, but by other metrics, kind of things are also going well. It's like um, it's like if, if you if you if the if the pie is getting bigger and you're getting a smaller slice, a, a, a smaller if, if the percentage of the pie you're getting is smaller, but the pie is getting bigger, you might end up with more pie. But like overall, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I do get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. But in I mean, and in and in terms of how we slice the cake, when we look across the uh, the Islamic world, the radical Muslims are winning the debate with their fellow Muslims, which I, is I, clearly state, I and I want to state true. for the record, I don't, I don't think one second, I want to state for the record that I'm not here saying that every Muslim is a radical Muslim. Many Muslims are against the radical Muslims, but the percent went from the birth of Al-Qaeda, which is kind of like, we'll just call that the start point, though it clearly wasn't. From the birth of Al-Qaeda, the number of radicals has grown dis has grown massively. Yeah. You cannot deny a fact. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's true. And the, 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 the liberal way of trying to tackle this is on the premise of, well, it's just individuals carrying out criminal actions. And that is not dealing with the problem. Yeah. Because the Western liberal mindset doesn't accept the idea of collective cultures. Well, uh, well, well, liberal one, progressives do. Yeah. One, one, uh, suits one, one, one kind of good example of like Western liberalism kind of taking proactive steps to defend itself is how it's attacked. It proactively attacked communism, which was an ideological threat, and it kind of like it made sure that it, it kind of incentivized its academics to attack this. It uh, tried to subvert uh, communist organizations. So e even though it's even though kind of like you, you're still giving people the right to make communist speeches, you're still like you know taking proactive uh, policy decisions to make it hard for them. Can you, act, can you explain to me, in, uh, from your perspective, why you think classical liberalism is losing its way to liberal progressives? It's, um, well, it, it's because people in the media kind of uh, are more often of an empathetic mindset, and people of an empathetic mindset can be easily persuaded to these kind of uh, postmodern Marxist narratives. What is, it about, what is it about classical liberalism that is unable to counter the liberal progressive narrative. Because you are you're a mighty in this place. Content of my heritage from Yago Benali. Man say it straight, man don't listen to BBC. Man don't listen to IT. Like for example, look. Um, yeah, because like there are people who say that you know like we are Muslims, you know, they they do a lot of stuff in it. But at the same time, we know that you know and I know that, that that's not what Islam represents, right? So now that you said that there's no Sharia law, for example, in Islam, we believe that if you come to a country that has a law, you should abide under that law as long as that law is not like um, making you leave your own religion. 